So last week we did um, <laughs> we did our episode on um, microphones, which was brilliant, and uh, I learned a lot. And now, uh, well, the lads came up, and we did some um, testing, and then you know uh, got Tim to do some playing and use the different mics, some of the mics that we showed in the previous episode, what they actually sound like, and sound like in different positions. I think that's really. An eye opener, isn't it? Like it's, it's, it's positioning of the mic, it's and also what the, which mics yeah. sound brill in our to our ears, and which it'd be interesting to see some surprises. Which ones that you like, because obviously, which ones are bringing out the natural sound yeah. of the instrument to yeah. your ears? Yeah, from a sort of you know, we've got to kind of separate the perspective or whatever, because it's like reproduction of the guitar. Mm -hmm. Then there's also like something you just like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm. which might be. But it's and it, it's interesting. I always think it's really interesting because when you when you pick up a guitar, what do you hear? You hear something different to the microphone because the microphone's sitting right in front of the guitar. You're almost the microphone is taking the listener's perspective rather than the player's perspective. Yeah, that's why people are using sound ports sometimes. On the guitar. I've seen those on the guitars. What's your thought on that? I am working on something sound portish, which I think is different. Right. But um, but with us not being able to travel at the moment, I haven't R and D it fully. Okay. But I've got two at the house. I'll bring them in. You can have a listen. Yeah, I'd like to. I've I've seen those kind of things before, years ago, and I, it was quite nice to have yeah. that air come at you. Yeah. You know, I but think they were more like electroacoustics, where they didn't have any kind of sound hole at the front, but it was kind of here and so yeah. I don't know who made it, but it was an interesting concept. Yeah, we've, mm. we've added something different, but it's definitely, definitely loud. Yeah. And you can, as for the player, but obviously yeah. the microphone is, well, it's like concert classical guitars, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people used to have on, you know, concerts and there was no microphones. Yeah. You know, in 1880 or whatever yeah. it was. So like, you know, getting the volume and getting that, you know, a lot of, Tone design comes from that. Yeah. And and getting the, the guitar as loud as possible. So. Projecting the yeah. sort of... Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. So, five mics. Yeah. We had the SM57. Yeah. Classic. The SM7B. Yeah. Which is the, the new kind of pod... Well, I guess Podcasting. it's been around for a long, long well, time. Well, unvocal mics. You see a lot of people using A lot of people are using them. Very, very popular at the minute. We went for an Aston... Spirit, Spirit, which was which is yours. That one's mine. Which is about what three three hundred dollars, like yeah. Three hundred. I don't know what is in America, but nice, big, robust, yeah. very, popular. Very, very popular, very popular, very popular, very nice. Little Neumann, Neumann KM one eight four, KM one eight four, which is a great microphone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a small, small diaphragm mic. Yeah, um, and then we had mine, which was the Brauner, my Brauner, which is my, which is which is actually an entry level. This Brauner. is this is how brilliant Brauner are. Like it's the it's their basic mic. It's a couple of thousand quid probably, you know, a bit less maybe. But it's they make mm -hmm. serious big valve, you know, great things. I know which one I like, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. Yeah. So we've got three positions. We've got a body, which 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 we kind of you know it was sort of to the left hand side as you're looking at the guitar, left hand side of the sound hole. Yeah. Now the next position was directly in front of the sound hole. Which we talked about, you know, you've got all that yeah. air coming right into the yeah. diaphragm, right? And we talked <laughs> about how, how there was challenges with that. Because if you're going to use something like a very sensitive microphone, mm -hmm. you would probably have to pull back from the sound hole, depending on how you're playing. Because if, mm -hmm. you, if you're really digging in, yeah, yeah. you pull back. But then what would happen is if your room's not kind of treated right, you start picking up lots of the room mm -hmm. and you might, that might sound great if, mm -hmm. if it's the kind of room that you want to put in your mix or, you, or, you know, it's if you're just doing a guitar and a, and a, and a vocal thing, mm -hmm. it might sound great. But maybe if you got it in with a bunch of other stuff, it might sound really boxy and terrible. Mm -hmm. So third position, third position is the, the classic kind of neck tw in between the 12th and the 14th fret. What, angled sort well, of we didn't do that we didn't we just we just put them yeah. dead on okay we put them flat on so you Safety can hear what position. they do so i've got body body yeah. position sound hole yeah and body join yes okay yes whether it's at the 12 or 14. so where do we want to start do you want to start with the dynamics just let's start at the beginning okay let's start at the beginning let's start with 
my microphone, my go-to, yeah. my Brona on the body. Okay. Brona on the body. Okay. Okay. Should we move along each microphone, body, sound hole, neck? Yeah. Or do you want to go? I would go down body on each of them because because as it stands we've got nothing to compare it to. That's okay. Yeah. That's a, that's that's a good body call. body 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 okay. body body. SM seven B, very flat dynamic microphone on the body. Tim's nailed that G chord, hasn't he? Really, yeah. Uh, no no, no metronome on this, by the way. That Nobody is, that plays is, a G chord uh, quite like Tim. I do like my G chord. Yeah. Just a standard G chord, not an expensive. It's not an expensive one. It's doesn't not it, doesn't even have a third. Chord, it's like a power chord. Power chord. It's like a power chord. It doesn't have a third in. It's just lots of G's. I thought this power chord was something you plugged in at the back of the computer. <laughs> <laughs> They're called kettle leads, aren't they? <laughs> they, are, they are what's called kettle leads, Tim. <laughs> yep. IECs. Right, as well you next, know. Next is next. SM57 on the body. <laughs> A little brighter, right? It's got a bit more uh, sparkle about it. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Aston Spirit on the body. <laughs> Nice. Neumann on the body. It's okay. interesting because it, you're starting to hear what you hear is the body of the guitar, and the su there's a it's, it's subtle between. Sometimes it's a, it's I try, what I try to do is I try to balance up all of the gains. So mm -hmm. the Brauner, I gave it 20 dB of boost, of gain. SM7, which is a very quiet mic, I give it 50 dB, just to try and even them all mm -hmm. out. So what you're Volume hearing wise. is they're almost the same mm -hmm. kind of volume all the way through. But if we go back to, let's say, for example, we'll, we'll uh, listen to the Brauner and then the SM57. Okay, this is the Brauner. The SM57. So for my ears, I like the Brauner. Yeah. But one's two thousand yeah. pounds, and one <laughs> is seventy-nine or something, isn't it? Yeah. Do you like it more twenty-five times more than you like the <laughs> other one? <laughs> but for me, I mean, I'm hearing. Obviously, I'm hearing what it's doing. With the Brawner, you've got this wider kind of range. Yeah. It's picking up lots of lovely highs and loads of bottom end. The SM57 isn't doing that yeah. anywhere near as much. But what the SM57 is bringing to the party is the resonance of the wood. Yeah. And, it, and sometimes I shove a 57 in front of the body just for giggles. But, but the fact is, they're all pretty good. And it's, mm -hmm. You're just looking for, like, like the SM7B. I like the dryness of that. It's mm -hmm. like very... It's very flat. Yeah. I think that's why people like that microphone. It's extremely... It, so I think the 57's got a bit of a bump. Yeah. You know, the sort of presence boost. So we go on to the sound hole. Sound hole. One thing Let's go in reverse order. Okay. One thing I think is worth mentioning, though, is that the Neumann, for me, actually, listening again, I only listen to these when I recorded them, is the best of both worlds. From here, anyway, from where I'm sat. To get paid by Neumann. He loves Neumann. I love Neumann. I do Neumann. love Neumann. Neumann. But listen, listen. It's like got both. Got a bit of both. It has actually. It's like I've got a bit of the dynamic, a bit of the large diaphragm. I mean, it, that's probably what it's about, but it just sounds, not, sounds usable. But now listen to the, now listen to the guitar. Sound hall. Sound hall. Right. Okay. Different colors. Let's start with the Neumann. So much louder. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's got some body to that's it. It's very nice, isn't it? That's the Neumann. That's the Neumann. Here's the Aston. That's good as well. I think the Aston's a good microphone. That's pretty similar though, isn't yeah. it? Or my ear's just not good enough. It just sounds a bit like bass, yeah? Yeah. Is there more bass frequency? Yeah, well, the thing is, it's a, it's a large diaphragm yeah, microphone. Yeah. It's, pick, it's got a bigger yeah, diaphragm. Yeah. It's picking up more of those. SM7B. The 
something I like. It's very dry and like honest, that mic. Yeah. What about the SM57? Oh, this is the, this is the thing. There's SM57 on the sound hole. Not as much bass, but top end is very attractive, isn't it? Very, again, like very the, usable. Very usable, mid, lovely mm -hmm. mid tone in it, you know? Because you don't always want all those overtones and bass in there. Like the SM57 has been like forgotten, the time has left it behind. <laughs> and that, and it's actually a It's this whole Emperor's mic, New Clothes thing that I, was, I sort of mentioned the last time yeah, we were talking, yeah, you know? Yeah, for, for me sometimes, you know, it's about where you place it and it's about, it's about the subject. Listen to the Brauner though. You know, it does sound expensive. It doesn't, still doesn't sound 25 times better than the last one. <laughs> I'm going to say That's that. It's interesting, yeah. isn't it? It's very interesting. Yeah. Also, I thought the sound hole was like the... The, the better thing. sound. No, it was the thing, when I studied a little bit of production, nowhere near your level, it was like, don't put a microphone in front of the sound hole. Mm -hmm. like, but do they all sound real. Yeah, You've sound got like loads of body there, right? And this bass, mm -hmm. full. You aren't whacking the guitar, though. You are. you are thrashing that guitar. Yeah. All that air be flying into those capsules, and it, yeah. it, would, it wouldn't sound the same. Yeah. So it's horses for courses, you know. Definitely, attack is important mm -hmm. relative to the placement of the mic. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you know that proves, right? Mm. So if you are whacking it, maybe you you know you, you steer it to the body. Let's well, let's try the. The neck joint, the neck. area. Okay, so what, what do you want to do? You want to do the... Uh, Just do... Aston. R random. A random, Aston. Random Aston. Nothing wrong with that. SM7B. I think this is where these sound a bit lacking. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it all sound good because the guitar sounds great. <laughs> it is a great guitar. Am I allowed guitar. to say that in a, in a... It is a great guitar. Yeah. Which, which one did we use? We used my... DYM. DYM, yeah. 57. That doesn't sound very good to me. That falls over here, yeah. this 57. Yeah, it's not yeah. as good as a sound hole position. Isn't that amazing? Just where you put it, just like within a f 12 inches of each yeah. position. Yeah, yeah. huge mm -hmm. difference. This is the Brauner. Ha! So actually this position on all of them hasn't, is, lacks warmth compared to the, say, the sound hole. Mm -hmm. I think but it's adding... Top. And what the, and what the, well, let's listen to the Neumann, which is great in this position. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. So the Neum I think the Neumann, for me, for me, the Neumann's the clear winner in that position. So yeah. basically, you need three mics, you need a Brauner <laughs> on the body, an SM57 at the sound hall, <laughs> and a Neumann at the, at the, the, the neck We should, we should try position. that. We should maybe try the, that. Put the three together and see Yeah, what maybe sounds. we'll yeah. do that, yeah? yeah. We'll do that. It's that quite interesting. very cool. But, so, I think what this demonstrates really, really well is that Certain microphones are very, very good at picking up the characteristics of the bits of the guitar that you want to bring out. Yeah. You know? So that's why traditionally you get like a large diaphragm mic on the guitar yeah. and a smaller diaphragm mic mm -hmm. on the sort yeah. of yeah. on the on the on the neck, on the Yeah, joint. that makes sense. You know, listening to that and what we discussed last week. So i will be interested to hear what people are doing. I mean a lot of people are using, you know, three or four mics maybe five sort of mics are kind of, could be 70% of mic sales under a thousand dollars, say. Yeah. And positioning, well, for me, I will certainly try more positions for different styles of playing, mm -hmm. whether it's strumming or, and, or finger style or whatever. And, but all of them are pretty good, aren't they, mm -hmm. actually? I mean, the, there's not, nothing, Apart from some of them lacked something at the, the body joint position, but the rest is all, you'd be, I'd be happy with that. I guess the thing is, is you don't let anything stop you. So if you've only got 79 pounds, don't let that stop your recording. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. That's, exactly. That's great, you yeah. And don't be fooled into thinking that you have to spend yes. 790 pounds in order yeah. to get a great sound. Yeah. Because it actually, that's a bit of a myth. But the home recording thing, it's all like, 
it's it, there's something very addictive about it. You start off with a three hundred pounds, five hundred dollar setup, yeah, and then you need this, and then mm -hmm. you need that. You need a better mic. You need a better mm -hmm. interface, and or you need you know plugins or whatever, mm -hmm. which is great. But it's like, do we get used? You know, if we, if we if we're buying at a certain level, do we get used to that? And then you hear something. So you you know before home recording, you didn't spend much time recording. So you probably you know, knowing the difference between a Brauner and a 57 yeah. would be very rare for you to even... Exactly, mm. you'd have but to now go to a studio to listen yeah. to those things. Now, yeah. And now, of course, they're readily available. Things like this on YouTube, yeah. being yeah, able yeah. to sort of A, B stuff and talk about things, it's very useful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, but look, recording for me is... It's, it's the subject, the instrument, the style. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of things before you even get to that, you know, so. And then it's like, you know, certain things suit the artist, the song. Yeah. You know, what you're gonna do later in the production, you might come back to, you know, maybe, because often people start with acoustic, right? It's like mm. your songwriting, one of the songwriting tools. Mm -hmm. You lay that down, sounds great, but you start getting other stuff on there, you gotta revisit that maybe. That's true. Yeah, you wouldn't want like all the lovely overtones if you've got loads of electric guitar yeah. and you had an acoustic guitar. Exactly, yeah. Want it well, yeah. We can get to this in another in another show. We can start talking about how we then how we then kind of treat the sound. Yeah. You know, if we have, maybe we have a problem. Maybe we have something going on in the yeah, sound yeah. which is mm -hmm. a bit too boxy or boomy or, or something. Or more live stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, obviously a mic'd guitar sounds better than a plugged in guitar for an acoustic from my ears anyway mm. but there's lots of problems around using using a, a mic in a live I think we can try and do that yeah yeah I mean you know using a mic with a live band is a complete nightmare um, because the microphone picks up everything that's around it really yeah. it's, that's loud so that's why people generally don't do it but if you're in a quiet situation on the stage and you've got some you know, acoustic, everything's acoustic. Then yeah. mics, of course, wonderful. That's I think want, we can you know. try, you know, maybe another episode we can we can do sort of different e EQs or pickups. Mm -hmm. you know, there's lots on the market. Some people make their own. Mm. You know, there's all the big brands. There's some custom stuff. Yeah. And uh, we can test that out. That's brilliant, mate. Great. So ho hopefully that was helpful to everybody. And, uh, you know, we have a studio and we have a bunch of acoustic guitars, so we'll keep sharing some of our experiences and um, and, uh, and, and knowledge and, and we hear back from you too.